In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can build your very own chat GPT like chatbot using the OpenAI API. And before proceeding, let's have a quick look at the app that we're going to build today. So this is the OpenAI chatbot. You paste in your API, hit on enter, and then you're ready to go. Type in your prompt. Here we're asking what is Python? And there you go, you have a chat GPT like chatbot built in Python using Streamlit and the OpenAI API. And if this sounds like fun, stay tuned and follow along. So in order to build this, you can go to the GitHub repository of this chatbot and the links will be provided in the video description. So you're gonna see here that this particular repo is comprised of a Streamlit app.py, which contains the code for the chatbot Let's take a look, this one. And we have the requirements.txt, which contains the library dependencies, which includes Streamlit and OpenAI. OpenAI will have the GPT 3.5 large language model that we'll be using in the chatbot. And then you could customize the color of your Streamlit app from within the config file here. And that's it, that's all you need to build the OpenAI chatbot. Let's have a look at the code. So you can see here that the code is comprised of less than 40 lines and the code was taken from the Streamlit documentation, build conversational apps. So let me show you links provided in the readme here and it's at the bottom. So you could click here and take a look at the tutorial. So this will go over exactly in written form how you could build one. And it goes into great depth into the various elements that we'll be using, such as the chat message and the chat input methods. And so a specific documentation page for those two elements are found here. So as already mentioned, we're going to use the Streamlit library, which is the low code web framework and the open AI Python library. And this particular library will allow us to interface with the large language model from OpenAI, particularly the GPT 3.5, which is the large language model powering ChatGPT. Let's have a look at the code here. But before going through line by line, let's show you how to deploy this app to the Streamlit Community Cloud. So go to streamlit.io slash cloud. If you don't yet have an account, sign up for one. And here you could continue with your Google account or your GitHub account. So click on new app, select the repository, which is the OpenAI chatbot here. Here, OpenAI chatbot. But for your case, you could go to this repo and let me make it into a template. There you go, I made it into a template. So what you could do is you could click on here, use this template, and it, it will be cloned to your own GitHub account. And therefore, you could do exactly what I'm doing right now. And now we're gonna select the branch, which as default is correct at master. The file path here is app.py, And you could feel free to customize this to your own liking. I have already created one, so I'm just going to skip this step. But in your case, if you want to continue to deploy, you could click on deploy and then your app will be spun up in a few moments. So let me close this. Let's say that you have already deployed the app and you're going to get something similar to this one. So this is the deployed app. And the first thing that you're going to notice here is to the left side in the sidebar panel, it's going to ask for the OpenAI API token. And in order to paste in the OpenAI API token, you first need to have an account with OpenAI. So I already provided you the link right here. This is if you have already an account and you are already logged in. All right, and so in order to create your own API key, you could click here, create new secret key. And then you type in the name, which could be an arbitrary name. You could just say my API key so that you know that this is coming from this particular app. Copy it, and then we're ready to paste it in. 
you could either do one of the following, paste it in here into the chat bot, or you could go to your deployment of the app. So let's show you. So I'm going back to Streamlit Cloud. And for convenience, whenever you are already logged in, you could just go to share.streamlit.io. And let me search for OpenAI. And this is the chat bot. I'm going to click here, and then I'm going to click on the settings. And then in the secrets here, you're going to type in open AI underscore API underscore key equals quotation mark. And here you're going to paste in your open AI API key, right? And then you're going to save it. And if you do that, your app will be accessible without the need to put in the API key, right? So don't forget to click on save, but I'm not going to save it. And I'm just going to proceed with entering the key in the app. And I'll enter. And then once the key has been entered, it will detect whether this is a OpenAI key or not, which we have some conditions to check. I'll go over that in just a moment. And so it'll detect that the key has been entered and then it will tell us to proceed with entering our prompt message. So here, let's go ahead and type in what is Python. And then it will print out the output in chunks of text, similar to ChatGPT. We're also asked it what is Streamlit, and we get a generated response. And let's see whether it has memory of what we've just asked it. What questions have I asked? And it knows that we've asked both of these questions. And so we can see here that we have the ChatGPT like clone working. Let's go back to the code and let's go over how it exactly works. Let's go to the streamlit app.py. So you're going to see here that it is under 40 lines of code. And you'll notice that the code was taken from the streamlit documentation, the tutorial on build conversational apps right here that I've just shown you earlier on. So the first two lines here are importing the prerequisite libraries. So we're importing OpenAI and we're importing Streamlit as ST. Then in the sidebar, we're going to do the following. We're going to print out the title of the app, which is OpenAI Chatbot. We've also included an emoji here. And then we have two if-else condition statements, which will detect whether we have already appended the OpenAI API key and the secrets management of the community cloud, which I've shown you previously. And if it has detect that key is present, it will display a success message here. And it'll go ahead and assign the key to the variable here, which is the environment variable used by OpenAI. Otherwise, if no key is detected from the secrets, it will ask for the API. So you're going to see here that it's asking us for the API when we load it from scratch. And once we have entered the API key, it will prompt us that we could begin by typing in our prompt message, which is here shown in the green box. So here we're going to initialize the session state for the messages. And the st.sessionState.messages is a session state that will keep track of the chat message history. So whatever we're talking with the chatbot about, all of the contents will be saved into this particular session state. And it is where and how the chatbot has memory. Next, this block of code here will allow the display of the chat message depending on the row and also the content, whether it's coming from the chatbot, the assistant, or it is coming from the human user. From lines 25 until 39, this is the important logic for the large language model workflow. So what it will do here is we're going to start with a if condition, and then we're going to simultaneously define the variable and also the if statement that we want to have a chat input message box displaying what is up, right here, what is up inside the box. And upon the following contents, and so what this will do is if a prompt message is provided, 
And so what it's going to do here is it's going to append to the session state messages variable that the user has provided the following prompt message. And it, it will simply print it out here, the chat message of the user and using the st.markdown followed by the input argument, which is the prompt message provided in the chat text input here. Then the large language model will be processing the response based on the provided input prompt. And in order to do that, it will iteratively print out the text chunk inside a message placeholder, which will be updated every time the chunk message has been printed out. So here we're going to see that we're defining the message placeholder, and then we're going to use it here. Iteratively, it will be printing out the text chunk right here. And it's finally, when all of the text chunk has been aggregated in the full response right here, it will be aggregated owing to this line. Then the message will be printed on line 38. And the for statement here will allow us to perform the iteration of printing out the text chunk. And the large language model response will be generated via the openai.chatcompletion.create method. And here we're specifying that we want to use the GBT 3.5 Turbo as the large language model. And we're specifying the messages content here. And then finally, we're going to append to the messages session state the full response that has been generated by the assistant, which is the chatbot. And therefore, you're going to have a messages history comprising of the user prompt and the corresponding LLM generated response. And all of this in less than 40 lines of code, and you could generate this very simple chat GPT-like clone in Python using Stromlet. And what you have here is essentially a template that you could customize further using the various input widgets provided by Trimlet. For example, you could dig the documentation of the OpenAI library, and then you could essentially add widgets that will control the parameter settings of the large language model. For example, you could adjust the temperature, you could adjust the top P parameter, and several others. And the widget could be placed, for example, in the sidebar, and the user could adjust the parameter setting in order to try out and see whether it will influence the generated response. And so let me know in the comments section if this was useful to you and how you intend to customize this template to create your own awesome large language model power app using Streamlit in Python. And so until next time, happy Streamlitting.